Hello everyone, and welcome back to another patch notes review for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. This is going to be patch number 11.50 for the PlayStation and the Xbox, and it's coming out on November 7th. It includes a whole bunch of bug fixes, as well as some balance changes as well. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Under main additions, we have number one, point allocation for the free meal skill on the Rex Roar Helm Beta has been changed from two to one. So I think that's a nerf, right? I think what it's saying is you used to get two levels of free meal and now you're getting one level of free meal. I don't know what their decision behind that was. It didn't seem like it was overpowered, so it didn't really feel like it needed to be nerfed, but you know, maybe that's, maybe they did. They're the ones who probably have the numbers and they're probably seeing too many people using it. Number two, decoration list order has been updated in accordance with their skills. This change affects the following location. Item box, sell items, decorations tab, item box, set decorations, current equipment, equipment box. So I'm really curious to test this one out because one of my major complaints is just how hard it is to get the skill you want into your... I started doing this thing where we would filter for the correct skills and I'm, I'm like memorizing the filter page rather than the decorations page because there's too many decorations with the giant decorations now, the ones that contain two skills at a time. Number three, fixed an issue where supply items would not be returned when calling a loadout that contained empty spaces. Hmm, it says here supply items that exceeded the space limit will be discarded. Hmm. Number three, for some pages in the monster field guide, rare carved materials are now listed according to priority. The materials and chances of obtaining, obtaining them have not actually changed though. Okay, so nothing too wild. Free meal secret, is it too strong? Let me know in the comment section. Maybe it's a really great skill to use while you're stocking up on items. It seems like once you have enough items though, you wouldn't really need that skill anymore. And then for wide range, I don't really run out of, you can just use regular free meal. You don't really run out of mega potions, which is the main reason you would be taking wide range. So yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised that they nerfed that. Next up, we have bug fixes and balance adjustments. Number one, fixed an issue where information for the volcanic region of the Guiding Lands would not display when the world map was opened inside the base. Pretty simple. Number two, fixed an issue where the Affinity Slide skill would activate while inside the hot spring found in Celiana's Gathering Hub. That doesn't seem like that big of a problem. <laughs> Number three, fixed an issue where the felines helping in the Steamworks would jump with the improper timing. And number four, fixed an issue where you couldn't enter your room in Celiana. Oh no. Those were all under changes to the base. Next, we have changes to monsters. Number one, fixed an issue where special tracks would not drop from scarred Garuga in the Guiding Lands. Yeah, that's a problem. Number two, fixed an issue where if the quest poster paralyzes or stuns a monster and then abandons the quest and other hunters built up mount attack damage, if the quest information screen is opened, the moment the monster exits its binded status, the monster would enter a mounted status and would be incapacitated. What? <laughs> How did they even figure out that that was occurring? How did they figure out that was a problem? That's pretty wild. Number three, fixed an issue with Barriath's landing point when the monster would jump off from a wall. Hmm. Number four, fixed an issue where the quest would not be complete if the Dragon Razor hits Vulcana while it's in the air. Oh, that would be annoying. Number five, fixed an issue where Volcano would not move its gaze body to the player's direction. Hmm. Number six, fixed an issue where Fulgur Bugs could be obtained from Zenogre in Arena Quests. That doesn't seem like that big of a problem. Number seven, adjusted invasion rates for Savage Devil Joe in quests that it has a chance of appearing in. Nice. That one was really high up on my list of annoying problems, and if they lowered the amount of times he interrupts you, that would be really good. Am I on number eight? I think I'm on number eight. Eight, fixed an issue where players in base camps would be hit by Lunastra's Hell Flare attack. Hell Flare. So they named the attacks. That's so interesting. You're in a base camp and you would still be hit by Lunastra's Hell Flare attack. It is almost too, I don't know. It's exactly what you would expect from a Lupastra fight. I'm on nine, right? Nine, fixed an issue where Azur Rathalos would get stuck on the outer edges of pathways when in the ancient forest. Wow, so just imagine you're fighting the second most annoying monster in the game in the largest map ancient forest and he flies off like he normally does and then you don't even get to finish the fight. I think I would commit Teostrabath. 
and number 10 fixed an issue where, under specific conditions, Kushala de Aura's head could not be broken. Ah, the, the first most annoying monster in the game. Well, now his head is breakable. Very good. All right, under bug fixes for the player, we have number one. Fixed an issue where, when the gun lance doesn't have worm stake shot loaded, a jumping reload smash wouldn't be performed when using a lunging up thrust to scale a wall. I didn't know you could use a lunging up thrust to scale a wall. I gotta go, <laughs> I gotta go used to that. I've never tried that before. Number two, fixed an issue where weapons would display unnaturally when attempting to attack after a temporal mantle evade. Huh. After performing the charge blades amped elemental discharge. Okay. Never had that one happen. Number three, the clutch claw can now perform claw attacks after grappling onto a monster while mounted. Is that good? Does that mean we can soften the monster while mounted? Because that would be cool. Number four, fixed an issue where the hitbox for the Clutch Claw's Wyvern Heart would disappear if the player sank into the ground while grappled onto a monster. It has been fixed, so now it has an attack hitbox. Very good. Number uh, five, I think I'm on five. Grapple point priority have been adjusted, so it's easier to grapple onto the locations that the Clutch Claw hits. That's good. <laughs> Fixed an issue, number six, fixed an issue where player sliding due to Falconis Frost would only happen on the host side. It will now occur on the guest side as well. I didn't notice that before. Only happen on the host side. Weird. Fixed an issue where the hunting horn couldn't do perform melodies directly stocked from echo attacks. Couldn't perform melodies directly stocked from echo attacks. That's confusing. Hold on. Let me read that again. Fixed an issue where the hunting horn couldn't perform melodies directly stalked from echo attacks. Okay. Okay. Echo attacks would be like where you're spinning. That would be like note four, I'm guessing. Echo attacks? Strange. Number, what are we on? Seven or eight? Let's say seven. Fixed an issue while where while using a hammer, a hunter would perform a flinch shot immediately after grappling onto a monster, regardless of if the player could control the monster. Oops. Number eight. Fixed an issue that caused irregular behavior when the heavy bowgun special scope was used while the mind's eye ballistic skill was equipped. What is that irregular behavior? Number nine, fixed an issue where decoration information would remain when overriding an equipment loadout with the decoration equipped mantle with the loadout with no mantle. It's really specific. Number 10, fixed an issue where decorations would be removed from a mantle when calling up a registered loadout even though the mantle has decorations equipped. It's a pretty standard bug then. 11, fixed an issue where the hunter would perform an animation inappropriate to the item obtained when mining from mining outcrops. <laughs> so you could be mining something really un in, uh, not valuable and then do like a, maybe like, whoa, I got a valuable thing pose. Uh, number 11, fixed an issue where the tail raider signals position wouldn't be saved when calling up an item loadout. What? <laughs> fixed an issue where the tail raider signals position wouldn't be, oh, okay. So you would have the tail raider signal kind of like organized a certain way because you can do that in your item loadout. You can organize how it shows up, what order and there was a bug where it wasn't being saved when you sorted them. Okay, that's good. Next up, we have miscellaneous bug fixes. Number one, fixed an issue where a Palico's weapon would activate with positive affinity despite the weapon itself having negative affinity. Whoa, that is an old bug. We have known about that one for a very long time, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought we knew that all the way back with the Palico Devil Joe weapons, so, I suppose now it's going to matter if your Palco weapon has negative affinity. Number two, fixed an issue where returning to base would be displayed when traveling to the Hoarfrost Reach via the world map while on an expedition. Really? Number three, fixed an issue where players could not talk to the Linian researcher under specific conditions, thus not being able to obtain the surveyor set. Number, what are we on for? They should really add numbers to the, to the list of changes they're making, so it's easier to dictate. Fix an issue where only the regular size of certain fish could be caught. Okay, number five, fix an issue where certain endemic life would not have their size fluctuation behave properly. Strange. Number six, fixed an issue where the appearance rate of mollies would greatly increase when the feline zoom master skill was activated. Number seven, fixed an issue... 
issue where switching active squads to a squad with a player who deleted their account would fail. What? <laughs> Number 8. Adjusted the quest complete time limits for the event quest Farewell to the Frozen. Hmm. They don't really tell you how they changed it, though. Number 9. Fixed an issue where quest members would disconnect from the quest located in the Elder's Recess. They did it. Everyone celebrate. That should have been at the top of the very, like, the very top of the changes. That should have been the first thing they mentioned. Fix the Elder's Recess bug. It's awful. Uh, but it's gone now. I almost made a video about it because it was so awful. I was going to teach players how to get around it, but now I don't need to because it's gone. And, and that was the number one reason why I hadn't made it yet. Am I on number 10? Fixed an issue that occurred in the Guiding Lands where, while fighting a monster that has been lured out, if another another monster that was originally in the locale appears, the focus camera or target camera would suddenly change targets. It's not a big problem, is it? Number 11. Other minute game balance tweaks and minor bug fixes have been made. Wow, this is a long patch notes, isn't it? There's quite a lot in it. And I say that because finally we have one more list of corrections. Number one, for the following event quests, adjustments were made but no notice was given to the players. Number one, a new troublemaker in town, rewards were adjusted downwards as of version 11.01. .01. Number two, challenge quest number two, master rank intermediate monster difficulty was decreased and completion times were adjusted. Loadout 5 Heavy Bowgun contained two destroyer, uh, destroyer jewels, I can't talk, and it had to be updated. And the other uh, correction, I suppose, the quests are performing as expected, so there are no issues, but we apologize for not letting players know about the updates beforehand. Well, I don't think anyone even noticed, really. All right, and what else do we get? Do we get anything else? That is going to be everything for patch 11.50. Quite a few changes. The ones that really stood out to me uh, you know, there were a whole bunch of bugs, but there were two things that stood out far more than anything else. The Rex Roar Helm Beta was nerfed to have less free meal in it. It went from two levels to one level. And the other major change was that the Elder's Recess, recess Glitch has actually been fixed. We've had it for... How long have we had it? Like two weeks? Three weeks? I, I don't know when I discovered it, but it's been around for a while. And it just wrecks havoc. If you play multiplayer all the time like I do, so I'm glad that it's gone. We can finally get back to launching Elder's Recess with four players. They should have just said that at the beginning of the patch notes. It's like the biggest change. All right, and that's everything. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.